So let me welcome you all on board this uh, tonight's um, webinar, courtesy of the wonderful Reed C, which um, you all know about. And I hope you're going to get something from tonight's uh, talk, whether you are ready to go with your book or not. Uh, tonight is all about learning a bit more about design, a little bit more about the publishing world, how it works and how designers can work well with you, the authors. I've got some notes that I want to get in front of me, otherwise I'm going to forget where I am. First, a little bit about me. My name is Patrick. I've been in the publishing industry for too many years now. I started, in fact, before computers were even available um, for desktop publishing, which is a bit scary. So we started off doing things by hand, manually. Um, hello, Wendy and John. And seeing all the technology come in, it's just transformed our worlds as designers. It's fantastic. It's, it's a very exciting place to be. Um, I work with all sorts of publishers. Um, I do fiction, non-fiction, I do children, I do adults books, and I also do stuff for uh, associated graphics works as well. I have an agent and I do a lot of hand lettering, which you can see on some of my work. And I do uh, so stuff taking for advertising and other sorts of design stuff as well. So core of my work is book cover design. That's my main experience, but I do other stuff associated with graphics too. Now the whole world of publishing is a, is a fast changing one and um, oh, we've got someone here called Victoria from the land of enchantment wherever that is that sounds very exciting um, and now we've got this model now of breezy publishing and self-publishing authors which is very exciting and with the model is slightly different to the commercial world and I think this is the problem that a lot of uh, the challenge that a lot of publish uh, that a lot of self-published authors have is how to work with a designer to get the best cover possible and a little bit about how it works really would help I think so you can understand a little bit how we as designers work and then the quickest possible as that we're going to go straight in after that onto your covers we've got about 20 covers to deal with I can't do them all I'll do as many as I can and say as much as I can okay um, in the commercial publishing world if I'm as a freelancer I'll be working directly with an art director who they will then work with an editor and the editor will work with the author. Now with ReadC, all that's cut out and the, edit, the, the author is working directly with the designer. Now that's some good things about that and there's some not so good things about that. Now, the good thing about that is you have direct contact with people like me and we can then discuss about what your wants are. The not so good thing about that is the real core of a book cover is that it's a sales tool. It's for selling the book. And the good thing about a publishing house is they have a huge team of people marketing and, you know, production and advertising, all that kind of stuff, which you have to do yourself. And part of the brief from a commercial company would be to me, would be their background knowledge of how to market the book. They'll be telling me what sort of market it's going into, what kind of people they're going to be selling it to. And so as a, as a self-published author, you've got to get your head around all this so that when you brief the designer, you know exactly how to brief them. So I just want to say a little bit about that just before we start. And the main thing about a brief to an author is the genre. And I cannot emphasize this enough. You have to really get as specific as you can about your genre. Some people say to me, I'm doing a free, I'm doing a book about fantasy. Well, fantasy is enormous now. You have you have romantic fantasy, you can have sci-fi fantasy, you can have, you know, the kind of um, uh, stuff that does with um, dragons and stuff. You can have fantasy warfare. And so even within genre, there are subtle differences which you have to try and work out for yourself because the clearer you are at this point, the better your cover's going to be. So it's very important to understand that you've got to get as clear as you can before you brief the designer. And if you look on the Read C briefing uh, sheet, you'll see that you can post covers on there from Amazon that show the designer the sort of covers you're thinking about, A, that you like the look of, the feel of, and B, are the closest to your book that you're publishing, because you're going to be going up against other authors out there already. And your cover needs to be able to fit into that kind of market. Because if you, for example, you design, if you, for example, example you're doing a a crime thriller and you design it like a dictionary, no one's going to buy it. You have to be really specific and that's an extreme example, but you have to be very specific about where your book's fitting on the shelf. 
you have to also tell the designer what the emphasis for the cover is and what's really want to pull out of the cover. Um, but what you don't want to do is tell the designer what to do, and this is really important. If you tell the designer what to do, you might find it doesn't work the way you helped it, 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 do, it would do. See, most designers have years of experience of dealing with all sorts of books, and we see things very differently. It's a bit like men are from Mars, women are from Venus, designers from Mars, and authors from Venus, whatever. We think quite differently, but that's really good because we can bring a fresh and exciting view to your manuscript, to what you're doing. So in a sense, you have to just let go and trust us. Now, if you click on the Reedsy site as well, you'll see commendations. And it's worth reading the commendations. You'll get an idea of what the designers are like, who likes them, why they're good, okay? Check out their websites. You can get a good range of what they do. And all designers have different sorts of flavors. So look around, see, I mean, I don't mind. I'll have you come to me, but, you know, see what other designers are out there, okay? So, just checking the time. We're going to press on now. There's a couple I wanted to show you to begin with, because actually these are really good covers to begin with, and there's not much I want to say about them. Um, this one, Blue Light Diet, um, is a very, very strong non-fiction cover. And, you know, I don't know what much I'll, I'll do to that if it was my cover. I think that's great. It says what it, it does, excuse me, on the cover. For non-fiction books, you want to be strong, very typographical. It's, it, I mean, you can't see much of the copy here, but if you can... If you have the one at home, it's got all the um, the information you need on there. It's got a good shout line at the top, uh, a good accommodation at the top, sorry, which really helps to sell the book. And it, yeah, it's very, very strong. If, you know, if you, that was very small on, whoops, on Amazon, <laughs> you'd see it very, very clearly, wouldn't you? It's great, great, strong cover, that's good. Um, and this one, Rebirth, which I might talk a bit, little bit about later, is kind of almost there. It's not, not quite, but it's getting there. It's good, strong. Again, it's, you know, you can see it quite clear, quite small. It's a, a good, strong cover. Um, but I won't, I won't deal with too much of those because they're nearly there. What I wanted to do more tonight is look at covers that are kind of getting there, covers which aren't getting there at all, and need a lot of help, so we can actually move people on a bit, okay? So actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with number one, which was this one, which is um, Ace Trucker Space, uh, Ace, sorry, Ace Tucker Space Trucker. Um, and I'm going to deal that also with another cover, which is this one here, Werewolf for Hire. So if you've got those in front of you, you can look at those. Now, I'm dealing with these two first because they're perhaps the furthest away from being um, workable covers at the moment. But that means that you can't do something with them. So with this one, um, this Space Tucker, Ace Tucker one, I'm just going to get this up on my screen as well so I can see it. Um, we've obviously got slightly quirky, humorous kind of sci-fi uh, novel. And, you know, obviously there's, there's things that come out of the uh, imagery, which is quite fun and funky. We've got some quite, you know, chaotic type going on there and stuff. And, you know, bought back, you, you probably see that quite small on Amazon. It's OK. But it could be really tightened up a lot, I think. Um, the main uh, title type is just just too chaotic, it's going all over the place. And the other thing about the illustration is, if you look at it, the main point of focus, if you draw back, is not the main character, but it's Elvis, because Elvis really stands out there. If you are doing your illustrations or you're commissioning someone to do illustration, make sure that you have a really good, strong focal point for the illustration, because this is just too general, it's just, you can't really work out what's going on. And it needs to have a stronger focus. So I would say, if you can maybe, in Photoshop, pull out the central figure, oops, where is he, central figure there, and then maybe make the, the others less dominant, that would certainly help. If you can simplify the type, um, that would help a lot. Or even just simply, you know, open up the letter spacing so that actually you can read the type more clearly, and maybe bring Ace Tucker down a bit. It's difficult to go into too much detail uh, at this sort of stage because, you know, I haven't seen much about the book and stuff like that, but I would say, Making the title stronger and the illustration smaller would probably help a lot, I think. And use less, probably less effects, maybe less sort of glistening bits and what have you. And the other cover, this one, which is kind of not the same genre, but similar in terms of it's a little bit chaotic. Um, we've got, just got too much going on here. Now, it's, you know, potentially an interesting book. I read, read the, um, the little overview of it. It's an interesting sort of, you know, mystery, which is great. 
but there is too many levels going on here. We've got how many typefaces here? We've got five different typefaces, you know, which is, uh, it was too much. And where's the focal point? You know, is it the ring? Is it the ring of thoth? Is it werewolf for hire? We don't know. You have to establish a hierarchy. What's the most important thing on this cover? And I think, you know, if either, if you're a well-known author, you would put your author name up there, of course, very strongly. Um, but if it's not, you have to think about what is the most important thing. And for here, obviously, it's going to be the Ring of Thoth. That's the, the book title. Um, you've got a bit of a clash of images here, which is a bit difficult to work out what's going on here. This mummy in the background. I'll get rid of that and just have the ring. Maybe put a glint around it or something like that. Simplify the type. Have a really strong, maybe a sans serif typeface of Ring of Thoth with maybe a little bit of a quirk to it. The Werewolf for Hire presumably is the series title, I'm guessing. That can be much smaller and much simpler. Don't worry about the moon, just something very simple and much, much stronger. Check out on Amazon, check out um, fantasy covers because that will really help you to get an idea of how a good fantasy cover works. And most of the time they have, you know, strong type, but it could be slightly quirky, but not as quirky as, as here. It could be slightly decorative, perhaps. Um, you might want to reflect part of the Egyptian quality by having looking at Egyptian art and picking up some subtle, subtle details of Egyptian art. Um, but don't go over the top. Um, just on the author name, if I hold that back, you can't really see it, can you? Dark blue on a back background is a real no-no. You know, it's like having yellow on white. You just can't read it. So white or a cream or something like that, we can read it. Don't worry about a band. Keep it simple. In fact, most covers benefit from being simple and then building up from there. Let's look at uh, the fantasy genre. We have a lot of fantasy um, authors coming to read soon now. It's a very, very popular genre, and, and obviously it's a very exciting one. We've got all the, you know, everybody from, JJ, uh, from, from George Martin to, um, you know, Harry Potter and all that sort of stuff. Huge range of fantasy stuff out there now, so it's a very exciting market. It's quite deceptive too, and it's quite easy to think, oh, we can come up with a, a, a good um, fantasy cover. Um, I'm going to start with a couple which are quite good and almost there. Um, the first one is, uh, well, first I'll get them up together, There's two of them. Uh, Opus, for, Opus for the Dead and Spinning Silk. Oops, I'm having to work backwards and front. To front. There's one not getting on the screen clearly. There we go. So if you're able to get those up, I'm going to deal with um, Opus for the Dead. Um, now, these are very good. I mean, the imagery on these uh, are beautiful. They've been, I think, sourced from an artist on DeviantArt. DeviantArt's a really good website. If you don't know it, go onto that, check out loads of artists, really worth looking at. So we've got some very strong cover images. Now, something very important to know about cover, and if you go onto Amazon, you'll see this a lot, is contrast. Contrast is a really good thing. So you can see here, we've got contrast here. We've got sort of a dark shape on a lighter background. Here we've got, a, we've got lighter shapes on darker background, which is nice for a pair of books if you're doing a series. They're very arresting, in interesting images. But for me, the problem with these covers is the type is getting totally lost. And the thing about fantasy often is you want to make some kind of impact with the, um, the wonder of it, the, the, the peculiarity of it, the mystery of it, or whatever word you want to use. And um, if I'm going to bring these closer, you've also used quite an elaborate Gothic font. Now, Gothic fonts are great if you use them very carefully and often if they're shorter words. So you've got here, you've got that dissonance of the dead, which is very, very long. Um, because we're just not used to reading Gothic. I mean, I know in some cultures, perhaps in Europe, they do use, sometimes still use Gothic fonts, like in Germany, places like that. But it's not very common. So you me, use it very carefully and very simply. You might want to, for example, use a sans serif type face and just use one gothic letter with it, for example, for the start, like the lullaby or the dead, the D of the D uh, of the of dead. But on the whole, it needs to be bigger, it needs to be more punchy. And you could really make a nice design of the lettering. So you could actually, rather than having it in one line, make the image smaller and have lullaby quite large, then of the quite small and dead larger. It'd have a real impact. You might even have a little drop of blood coming down something like that. You know, something that really kind of draws the eye. And same same for this here. So I would move the image down. 
I would bring the type up to make it much stronger and much stronger, make it much more legible being Gothic type as well, because it's not easy to read. Red, whoops, where are we? Red, <laughs> red on a dark background doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It won't pop out. You know, make it white or make it a very, very light coming. You can see the lullaby of the dead works well because it's a very light pink. That's great. I've had a couple of other covers where people have put, you know, very close tonal colours together that just don't work. So avoid that if you can. Um, so that's that was a, basically really nice, really nice covers and, and basically not far off. Um, the shout lines, by the way, or the little bits at the bottom, they need to work harder too. Um, I would I would keep the author line quite simple and then maybe position the these little shout lines in places where people can see them. But yeah, no, coming on really, really nicely. Um, I'm just checking the comments, the size, so I can just make sure that I'm uh, reading what people are saying. Um, Great. So we have got three. Someone made a comment that the series name could appear on only on the spine. It's not common to put series titles on the spines. You can do it depends on the width of the spine. I mean, if you've got a small spine, you won't have much space for a series title. But a series title can go down very small. It doesn't have to be dominant. OK, that's that's good. Um, sorry. Someone says, what is a shout line? OK, a shout line is something that brings out something of the book just to expand the book a bit more. So here we've got. Um, here it says, every ghost has a story on this one, which is a great shout line like this. The other one's a bit longer. It says, you never know who you'll meet when you're dead. Great. I mean, it really intrigues you. You want to draw you into the book. Really worth knowing about shout lines. Go into bookshops, look at shout lines. It's fantastic to see that because it can really help your book. OK, um, this one, I'm going to dash through these now. Um, Oh, yes. Someone says Shoutline is also commonly called your hook. Yeah, you can call it a hook. It's called lots of things. But Shoutline over here in the UK, most common. Spinning Silk. Now, this potentially, I think, could be an absolutely stunning cover. The, um, the author got somebody to generate the imagery. I mean, it's like you can't see it very clearly here, but it's all about it's a fantasy, historical fantasy concerned with the silk industry in, in Japan, I think. Um, it's a very intriguing image of all these different sort of, uh, looks like cells with, with silk uh, coming off it and intriguing object so you know really really interesting beautiful lighting um the typography is getting there but you know it doesn't really intrigue me it doesn't say to me this is a fantasy it, it could almost ironically be a book about spinning silk literally spinning silk and you don't want that you want to say this book is an intriguing historical fantasy so it's almost there so all i would do really possibly move the image down a bit reduce it slightly maybe and make more of the the title. There's a problem, I think, the, 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 the fact that you've condensed the top word to make it fit in, you've squeezed the words, makes it look a bit clumsy. And so it's also extending beyond the word silk, which also looks a bit clumsy too. So if you could, you know, make something the word silk, you could add a few little flourishes perhaps, bring some more of the silk coming down of it. Um, you know, make something more narrative out of the words. And it's something to learn, actually. You know, words themselves can actually say something. I'm going to show you a book that I did uh, up here. Um, this is called The Beauty of Murder. And you see there I've taken, uh, this is actually a, a time travelling book where the, the, the character goes back in time to the 18th century. So I took an 18th century typeface and kind of modernised it and wove little figures around it, if you can see that. I don't know if you can see those. Just give it a sense of intrigue. So you can actually do it a lot. Excuse me. Um, a lot just with the type to tell a story, and you're about telling stories if you're doing fiction. That is not if you're doing non-fiction. So yeah, great, great start. Really promising. Not a lot to do, but I really work on that title. Look at fancy in Amazon. See what kind of lettering people use. If you have to do hand lettering, you get someone to do it, or you know, find out what's out there for that. Okay. Similarly, this one here again, out of time. Um, almost there, very beautiful sort of uh, use of, of lettering there. Um, excuse me, I'll have some water a second. Um, if I can see that. Um, so again, you know, this actually works quite well from a, from a smaller scale. Out of time stands out, although it looks more like out time, so maybe of could be a bit bigger. And what I like about this is you've made the uh, out of time into a nicely designed unit. 
Now, this is something I don't see a lot with um, people who haven't got much design experience, but this kind of thing where you can actually bring the type into a beautifully designed unit that then sits on top of an illustration is a really good thing to learn and to see in other people's designs. So if you look at them, because it draws your eye to, it gives a sense of intrigue. This is obviously saying fantasy, excuse me. Um, the woman in the background is obviously saying fantasy as well. The only things I do, I think, I only use very subtle things about this. Um, a lot of people doing their own comments, uh, sorry, own, own covers, often produce, um, you know, quite nice imagery, but it's quite clean. If you look at a lot of imagery, particularly fantasy imagery online on for book covers, it has like texture, it has subtleties of borders, it has intriguing lighting, it has things that want to draw you in. So this is nice, but it does look a little bit like you've photoshopped a clock on top of the background of a, of a woman walking away. And, you know, it's not bad, but it's, it's kind of not quite there. It needs finessing and needs just turning a little bit, tuning a little bit to make it just a little bit more intriguing, you know, to have some textures to it, some sort of lighting effects, maybe a bit of mist or fog or something, and just something to, to add a bit of extra to it. Um, the author name, again, if you hold it back, um, you know, you can't really see the author name very clearly. So, again, I advise you to, to look at that. I'll use a simpler typeface, perhaps a more modern typeface. It's a little bit old fashioned, a little cleaner. Open up the lights, the, the, the letter spacing a little bit to breathe. But, you know, coming on there, it's, it's, it's not bad at all. Um, OK, at the bottom, you've got a shout line which says, what if uh, you never should wait? Which, again, is a strong shout line. But it's getting a bit lost. You need to open up the letter spacing a bit or maybe bring it in to this area here, because that's a really good, strong shout line that can really help readers to, to be drawn into the book, which you really, really want. Um, okay, another one in the fantasy area here is uh, Landscape, which again is an intriguing cover. Um, I think if you can all get that up on, if you've got that access to that on your screens. Um, now again, you know, on the surface of it, it's a, it's a lovely looking Im image. I love this idea of the child's face just lit up, and that is really lovely lighting, this intriguing thing going on behind his head. It's a great image. But again, like the previous one, it's rather clean. It's rather clinical. It could almost equally appear on a non-fiction book about dreams about psyche, you know, so it's, it's a bit too, too real. You know, you almost want to take it a little bit away from that and take it into a slightly different area, um, which can be done, you know, using different sort of photoshops and, techniques and stuff like that, but look online at what other people have done. You might even want to alter the proportion of it. It's, it's, you know, it's not far off, it's a really interesting image. And, and all this down here is, is interesting and good. I think, again, it's a little bit dark, so again, if you, if you hold it away, it's, it's, it's okay, it's not, it doesn't really shout as much as it could do. And I think also there's a bit of a, um, a sort of a gap between the image and the type. So it's almost like there's a, a divorce between the two elements. And you really want to kind of try and bring them together a bit more to more of a solid whole so it really sits together as a, as a cover. But I think, you know, it's, it's not far off at all. You know, it's you know, quite potentially quite a nice cover. Is this one, uh, Scale Hearts. You can all see that. Now, if you have seen the other ones I've been showing you, you can see immediately that this is kind of not working so much as a cover. You know, it's a lovely, strong image. It's a very intriguing image. And it would certainly work well in terms of, you know, YA and slightly younger readers. I don't quite sure if this is going for. Let me just check my, my notes here because I want to make sure I get this right. <laughs> um, but, you know, what you need to do is really work on the title type. Here we go, Scale Hearts, yeah. Um, it just says fantasy, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure what age group it's. But it looks a fairly a younger sort of age group, I may be wrong. If it's not, then you need to look at the illustration because it looks a bit young. Um, but the, the, the scale hearts could really come up as a title. And again, look at fantasy um, artists, uh, fantasy covers rather, to see what sort of typefaces they're using. You know, scale and hearts could be on two lines. You could bring more decoration into it. You could make it into more of a logo type, really. Um, this is one of a series, so it needs to say this is the first of a series, it needs to shout loud. You've got all this area here. You could really bring the, the typography into and have the figure working around, which would be a really strong uh, cover then. Um, series title, I wouldn't put one dot the blood prince. I mean, maybe book one, 
then underneath the blood prints or something like that. One dot looks a bit kind of odd. Um, and you also want to maybe center it or something like that. But I'd really, the main thing is working on the, the scale hearts title, which could be you know hugely exciting if you really worked on that or got someone to work on it for you. So again, not far off, it's, here, you know, it's an interesting cover. Um, there's a couple here I want to deal with together because they are quite similar in genre. Again, it's fantasy um, and children's, um, one called Ifelpin Island and the other one called The Eighth Chamber. And uh, similar from genre and similar kind of issues, really, because they both suffer from being uh, flat and lacking in focus. They suffer from the fact that the titles aren't really reading very clearly and that they could work a lot better. It's not they can't work. I think you just need to think about how we're going to make them work. Now, with the eighth chamber, we've got a nice little detail here of the ank symbol coming in on the eighth, which is nice. I like that. You've got a nice sort of fantasy typeface coming in there, which is great. But unfortunately, it doesn't read over the illustration. And so it's difficult to know what the book's about. If you get up out here, you can't really see what's happening. So my suggestion on this one, if you want to pursue this, is to take maybe part of the illustration, maybe this focal point here with the children going into the cave, and then darken everything else around it. Maybe bring some light coming out of the cave as well or something like that. And then bring the title type together to make it a much stronger unit as we were talking about. Make it much stronger and, and, and uh, much more of a design. So eighth and chamber could come together and there could be much smaller above it perhaps. You know, to make it really work as a unit. And I'd be much stronger than I think. Um, there is a problem with quality of artwork. and um, There's so much really good stuff out there. I and mean, if you go in any bookshop, and obviously these Publishers are paying uh, illustrators a lot of money to do really high quality work. You're talking, you know, a couple of, couple of thousand dollars maybe or fifteen hundred dollars for a, a cover illustration that's really got a moment or more than that. So if you're employing a friend or relative or whatever to do your cover illustration, remember that that's going to be alongside, you know, two thousand dollar cover illustrations and it's just not going to sit well so think very carefully so if you're going to use um you know someone who's maybe not professional or someone who hasn't much experience um then i think what you need to do is to use it small use it less um prominently than you can than you would do a you know much high quality illustration and unfortunately same same with this um illustration here I, I think what I would do with this, it's lacking in focus on lots of levels. It's very flat cover, you've got three sections, you've got title, you've got middle, and you've got bottom, and, and it's just, just, just too flat. Um, there's no real focus for the illustration. What I would do, the illustration, I'd pull out the central character, make it much bigger, take everything else back, maybe knock it back a bit, if you want to use that illustration still, so that the main focus is the main character at the moment. I've no idea who the main character is. I really don't. I'm assuming it's this one here. Who knows? Um, the title type is just too complicated. I can't. There we go. Um, you need something that's a little bit cleaner. I love some of the decorative elements of it. It's not that it's all horrible. It's just that it's just too much. And you've got the same for your, your author name at the bottom. Um, so you really need to think, uh, also I'm just cutting up the, 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 the uh, comments here, so I'm, I'm going a bit behind with these, sorry. Um, you need to simplify it, and I would make the illustration, the main character much smaller, make something of the title type, maybe use the I from the, the type you've got at the moment, and then another type face the rest of it, but much, much simpler, because the moment is just really not working as a co coherent whole. Which is a shame because it could be a lovely, lovely, lovely cover. Or make the illustration f to bleed the whole cover and then perhaps work the type in over the top of that, which will be harder to do, I think. But um, so it's a lot of work needs to do on this one, I think. But, you know, I think you can get some tips from what I've just said there, if, that, if that's helpful. Um, I want to move on now to uh, the non-fiction, some non-fiction books. We've had some of those here. Non-fiction is a kind of different genre. Again, you have to think very clearly about the market you're reaching on this one. Um, and the, uh, the way non-fiction works is, again, is slightly different. Um, so you have to think about um, really where the, the genre particularly is for this. I'm going to show you that one again. This is very clearly, you know, a, a self-help kind of book. But this... Um, this one here, which is, again, potentially a lovely cover, is Born a Poor White Girl, but it says, it's crossed out black and Indian. 
Um, it's a beautiful photograph, potentially really, really lovely, but just needs a lot of thought about the image treatment, the typography, and the dominance of the type and how it how it's working for non-fiction cover. Um, this is a you know actually I mean not exactly what we call a misery lit. It's a, it's a it's a kind of a, a book that will intrigue people for someone's life who's been difficult, but obviously you can learn from that, which is very very important. Um, the cover, the, the image itself is beautiful. I wouldn't do much to that. You maybe put it in black and white, perhaps, or a very subtle kind of tone. Um, but I wouldn't do too much for that. It's, it's lovely as it is. But what I would look at is the way the title type is working. Um, in fact, if I mean, it's your book, I know, but I, I would even almost take out the black and Indian bit because it's almost not doing anything for the cover. You know, born a poor white girl might work, I don't know. But simpler, much, much simpler type. A lot of non-fiction books use very clean uh, sans serif type um, or very classic fonts like uh, you know, Trajan or, or um, Garamond or something that's very, very simple because it's classic and it has gravitas and weight to it. And you want something that really says to people, this is a serious book that's worth reading. It's very, very important. Um, because it's a very, by the look of it, very, very powerful um, sort of autobiographical uh, story. And I think, again, with it, so I'd have, I'd have a much uh, simpler, stronger title. Um, and for the, the, the subtitle, or Shout Run Underneath, I would actually reduce the number of words and make it, so make it shorter and cleaner. You keep it in a serif type, that's fine, but um, don't have too many typefaces. Again, it's a common problem with people design their own covers. Too many typefaces don't work. Two at most, I would say, on the whole, unless you're doing a book cover that's about different type, you know, it's all about the, the way the type's speaking to you. But just keep it nice and simple. Classic type, you know, your Garamonds and things like that. Um, and then uh, bring the title out much stronger. But I think that could potentially be a really nice cover if it was really simplified down. Get the main title out, Subtitle chat line much simpler and cleaner, and I think it could work really well. Um, this one, I, 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 I love the title. This one, come on, was it? Come on, funk, move your ass. That's a great title. Um, I had a little bit of conversation with the author a, a while ago about this, and I'm with with uh, so she told me that she's going to get on this tonight. So, uh, hello to you. And um, this is interesting because this book is a slightly humorous. Um, tale it's a it's a non-fiction book but it's kind of autobiogra autobiographical and she's a real fan of david sadaris who i'm also a fan of so if you don't know david sadaris check him out on on youtube but i think what would be really helpful um is if you actually check out some of the david sadaris uh, books already existing on amazon and some very very funny ones out there now the thing about um humorous non-fiction is you have to play it very very carefully and often very very subtly you don't often want to say this is a funny book hey come on join this funny book unless you're a comedian that's what you're about you want to do it subtly and i think david sadara's covers on amazon really do this well because they're subtle there's one which is just literally a plank of wood it's called um uh, is it calypso i think um it's just a plank of wood and the knots on the on the wood make the eyes and the nose and he's just on a simple mouth across and it's lovely because it's elegant it's simple it's witty and what you want in this kind of book is wit you want to show that you're kind of witty and funny without overplaying it and he might just do that with the words i mean come on funk your funk move your ass it actually could be done really nicely typographically these two are just aren't working as covers for me this one actually does look too much like a kind of greetings card. And this one just doesn't really seem to do, have any dominance or any, I don't know, it doesn't, I'm not doing it for me at all. Um, so I think you need to actually really think cleverly. Um, you know, you could have a very subtle image. You wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily put a, an ass on there. Um, you might want to, you know, wittily imply that um, through the use of, of the typography, for example. Or a very subtle image. On the David Sedaris ones, he has some really random images and brings in the title with that, and that works really well. So if you have a really random image with a, a, a strong type, a, a strong title like this, that can be just the sort of tension you want to bring the book cover alive. So I would start again with this, 
I'd look at something like David Sedaris or any other humorous writers who are really good. Simple, clean, witty, um, very simple images. That kind of thing works really well for this kind of genre of book, okay? Um, and next section I'm going to go on to is more of the kind of blockbuster thriller type because this is a very, again, very popular, very common. Um, again, going on Amazon, you can really see the main players in this sort of game. Your, um, you know, your, uh, your, 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 your people like, you know, James Patterson and Orin Dermott and Lee Child, all these people have very distinct feels to their covers and it's really worth you looking at what they're doing. Covers are fashionable. I mean, they, they go through fashion stages. It's really worth, you know, if you Google 1970s books covers and look at them, what they're doing then, what they're doing now, they are very different. And so it's very important also to keep up with what's going on in different genres. Now, um, the one I was going to show you first, which is work, working quite well, is this, this one, Six Hard Days in Andalusia. Again, we're quite intriguing image. We've got these cockroaches, we've got the, the implication of the Spanish flag and the colours, the red, the yellow and the black, which is great I really like that but again it's a little bit too clean everything's a bit too polished and, and, and hard-edged um, for something which is basically quite a gritty kind of uh, book um, and so I think again you know not much needs to be done but I would bring a little bit of kind of visual wit into it so for example you might have just a bit of a cock dead cockroach coming out the bottom the legs up or something or just something that just gives it a little bit of a twist to it or maybe you know, maybe a subtle skull uh, shading on the on the back of the of the uh, cockroach here. Just something that just makes you slightly more intrigued about what's going on. Maybe have a bit of texture in it, so it's not just all flat colour. Because it does make it a little bit dated, just having all flat kind of graphic like this. But again, you know, you know, basically, I think it's been possibly done, been done. No, it's been done by the author, which is great. So really nice, really nice attempt there. It's really good. Now, this one's quite interesting because at the top it says, you know, fraught, as a quote from Nick Rossi, which says, fraught with intensity and thrills, which is a very powerful quote. It would be fantastic to put on the cover as a, as a, as a recommendation, a commendation on the front. Um, but the cover itself, to me, says the opposite of that. It doesn't say fraught. It doesn't say thrills. It seems to say very, very passive very calm it's almost like a book about meditation almost you can imagine this as a Paul Coelho book a book about meditation perhaps um and I think that you know the coloring is interesting it's quite intriguing because the, the red and the, the grey is a, a lovely and that's good but there's no human interest there there's a, a tension here apparently about a, 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 a the son I think of the uh the author where is it I've got the wrong one on, on my screen here um, but there's a real sort of tensions going on within the book which simply aren't coming across in the cover. So, um, you know, you can, you can do that through the typography perhaps, making it a bit bolder. You know, if you look at people on, online like the you know, Joe Nesbos and what have you, they often have very, very stark, strong, bold typography and the image can be quite small. But what I would say for this one is to have a bit more human interest. So whether you have a figure, a silhouette of a figure running or you know, a, a man with a child running, that could be interesting. Something to draw you to the fact that this is actually a relational drama that goes beyond just an, an interesting image of an island with some light coming from it, which is, you know, it's okay, it's okay, but you really need to sort of build that up. Again, the author type as well needs to be a bit punchier. You know, most of these kind of authors use very, very strong typography on their covers because they, it makes a statement. It says this is a strong, bold book. It's got a statement. It's saying something about the nature of the content which is gritty it's driving it's action-packed now this next one comes close to that um with this very strong typography castle danger but again tonally if you look at it um it's all the same kind of tone so nothing really leaps out apart from the author you know, if the book is really castle danger which is an exciting title bring that up more so i would have that maybe white on there um, or you know, much stronger, maybe a uh, more condensed face, so you can make it much bigger. I'd bring the author in the same sort of typeface, or a sans serif typeface, maybe at the bottom, so it's working with the title, and make the image work much, much better. I and mean, if you again, if you hold it back, you can't really see what's going on. There's like a little pinpoint of light where the um, there's a fire. If you can see it, there's a, a building on fire, which again, it's a nice image. It's not a wrong image. You made to make more of it. You know, it's, it's almost coming off the cover. Make it more of a central focus. This is an important part of the drama. Um, 
the moon is nice, but it's kind of it's hardly there at all. Um, you know, you need to make much more of a dramatic narrative statement about what's happening in the book here. There's obviously an element of the book that's happening here. The reader thinks, oh, what's happening? There's a castle on fire. There's a whatever. What's up there? You know, you, that kind of draw you in kind of excitement that you need for a good thriller just isn't quite happening here. So look at, again, look at Amazon, look at some fuller, um, make the type much brighter, much lighter, um, stronger. Look at some of the typefaces they're using. Um, so there's more contrast. And again, come back to that contrast thing. A good cover often has good strong contrast so you can see the, the type and you can see the, the image, the image is arresting, it's drawing you into the cover. So um, yeah, a bit of work to do on that I think. Yeah, definitely have the same font for the author and for the main title. Now I'm rather kind of rushing through this a bit because I want to get as many done as possible before we run out of time. Um, this, this next one, now this one you see for example, has a lot of the elements in I can get it straight. <laughs> All the elements in I've just been talking about. This is actually, you know, pretty much getting there. Um, it's, you know, a strong image. We've got location, Paris, obviously. We've got some sense of drama. We've got this uh, this figure. What's he carrying in his bag? Is that a gun in his hand? It looks like a gun. I can't tell from the image, but it looks like a gun. Let's say it's a gun or something like that. Um, the lighting is dramatic. You've got a sense of a man walking into the sunset on some kind of mission. You know, this is classic sort of, uh, of the genre. It's classic film poster. It's that kind of, you know, you want to know more about what this guy's on about. And a great title, The Dead and the Missing. I mean, that's classic sort of, um, excuse me, classic sort of uh, book of this genre. So, you know, well done for this one. Again, the only thing I think, I mean, it's not not far off at all. I would, I would just maybe watch what's going on with the type here, uh, where it's clashing into the, the figure. And also the... And, and they're disappearing a little bit much, perhaps, behind the, the title. The other thing I think I was saying is, again, is the whole thing about it being a very clean-looking image. Um, just adding some texture to it, maybe a little bit of, you know, breaking up of the image or the type, um, a little bit of edginess about it, a bit of grit, a bit of scratching, you know. Um, again, look at, on Amazon at the sort of covers you see there. They always have this kind of textural thing going on which adds a bit of visual tension to the cover but yeah really nice really good, good stuff going on here and this is something that this cover could learn from i think because again beautiful resting image it's very very strong intriguing image uh this apparently is a police procedural uh, crime which is you know where you learn a bit about how the police work and it's from their point of view and what's going on in the police world which is again very exciting but it's really worth checking out some of the other authors that are doing this kind of stuff. So I've written some on the back here. There's a book uh, by Natalie Haynes called Cold Flame, which is worth looking at because she sees a very similar kind of image, but look at the treatment. Again, the type uh, isn't working here. It needs to be more coherent. Look, a bit like Dead Man Missing. If I hold that again, whoops. You've got a much stronger sense of type here. Um, and you don't actually have to have it all the, the same size. So you could actually bring out the words first, murder, and hardest. It could be really big and bold, and the, and is, and the. Again, could be smaller. But again, a, a bolder, stronger typeface would work much, much better, I think. Um, and you need to actually, maybe the image, maybe lighten this slightly, because it's, it's all kind of merging into a bit of slightly muddy um, quality at the moment. But with Photoshop, you can bring out the quality of the eye, and that'd be really intriguing. I like the scratching going on. You can maybe bring some of the scratching onto the type and stuff. Just a general thing, folks. You see at the bottom here, the type has been squashed and condensed horizontally, so it makes it much more thin. The problem with this, it makes it look ugly, because what happens if you push it too far, the horizontal lines become thicker than the vertical lines. And it just looks wrong, because generally speaking, horizontal lines are thin, and the vertical lines are thicker. So if you, it looks like it's been squashed up because the balance of the lettering of the stresses is all wrong. It looks kind of just slightly quirky. Find a proper condensed font and work with that. It's much, much better. and doesn't look so um, clumsy in that, in that sense. And again, you know, it's, it's, you know if, if you reduce this small, that can actually work quite well. So if you want to keep the type that sort of size, that's great. I'll make it a bit bolder. Um, you've used a font there which is called a mono a monospaced font so that you see the, the spacing letter spacing is a bit all over the place you need to the, between the f and the i and the i and the r the s and the e you know you see those sort of subtle details you really need to, to watch because it makes the, the cover look a little bit kind of clumsy in a sense but you know potentially really strong cover so again not far off that's great 
This one I love um, because it's just a great image. I mean, this is a humorous death. Um, so just in terms of the overall impact, yeah, I mean, it's great. And you've got a wonderful um, tension between a potentially humorous image with a really kind of, um, you know, scary title, a humorous, humorous death. Um, and, and then as soon as you see the title, the whole image takes on a different kind of feel, which is, again, a really good trick to employ if you're using cover design. It's turning an image on its head by the, by the, use, of the, by use, of the use of the title or interpreting the title in a different kind of way. Um, but what, and I like the way it's wrapped around the spine. That's Again, that's really lovely, and I'm sure it goes on the back as well, which is great. But if I hold it away from you, what actually leaps out to me actually is the JR of JR Bourneville. So I, I knock that right down. JR Bourneville one line, if you can, or if you're going to do it two, much smaller, the same size as the, as the main name, excuse me. Um, and a humorless death. Um, first, the typeface uh, doesn't quite work for me. I would also make it um, the same color as the background. Whoops, this is the light gray, cream, or white to make it stand out more. At the moment, it's not really standing out. If you take it back, you can't really see it. You know, use a condensed typeface sans serif, very clean, very simple, or very classic fonts like, you know, again, like your Trajans, your Caramons, or whatever it is, upper and lowercase maybe. So bigger, bring the lines together, uh, make it much cleaner and simpler to read, because again, it's a, it's a beautiful classic image. It's great, it could work really well, but clean, simple typography of this one, and it could be lovely. And it's nice because actually it kind of breaks the genre a bit, which is good. Um, in this case, because it actually takes you outside of what you're expecting and makes you think, oh, it says death. It doesn't quite look like a, you know, a death kind of cover, but what's it saying? So great, really, really good. Again, a potentially a beautiful cover, but I think just the typography needs to be different. Um, it says apparently it, it is a, a, ro a romance and a woman who's a painter. Um, red, again, I mentioned earlier, red on blue just doesn't work. I mean, knock that back, you're not going to see it. If it's in black and white, you certainly probably wouldn't see it at all. Um, so keep the colours bright, or light on top of a dark background, and obviously all the way around on a, on a light background. Um, vary the type sizes, maybe use a more classic serif font, perhaps, maybe upper and lower case. If you look at some of the um, books of this kind of nature, particularly if you're speaking to a female market, you might may, may want to um, upper and lower case because it has a more sort of slightly softer feel. Um, and bring the, the lines together a bit so they're a bit more, a bit gentler, a bit more, so a bit less space in between. So I'm <laughs> confusing my words here. Um, just checking my comments here. Um, and I think it's worth looking at covers online that have just typography because I think if you study what the typography does, um, I think you'd, you'd make it actually work a, a, a lot harder um, and much, much, uh, much, much cleaner, I think. So don't have lots of colours going on. Just have a very simple, beautiful typography. You might even just have a something little hint of what it's about by having a little bit of paint on it, it's a little splat of paint or a tiny little drop of paint or something just to have that. Um, but, uh, you know, but again, it's a lovely image behind, so I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily get rid of the image. Uh, just, just look at the typography and, and how that works. Uh, how much time? Got five minutes left. Ooh. Almost, almost out of time. Animals in the forest. Um, this isn't working for me because uh, it's all too flat and looks a bit too much like a non-fiction title. Because it's all too passive. Um, I mean, it's quite an interesting story. If you have a look at the story, a story to save the earth could be potentially quite exciting. And I kind of like the image, but there's no kind of drama there. There's no sense of you know, intrigue. There's no sense of what's going on in terms of a potential, um, you know, dramatic book, a, a dramatic narrative. Um, it says the day the terrible things came. Um, and yet it doesn't really say terrible or any sense of drama on that. So I would in a sense rethink this one. I don't want to sort of talk about this cover particularly because I think really this is kind of wrong approach for this kind of cover. I would look at really about, uh, think about in terms of what elements of the drama you want to bring out, how it's best to do that. You might just have a, a, a nicely sort of grainy photographic image, perhaps, of a fox in, in shadow or something like that, and, and simple dramatic type. Um, I would avoid the use of a colon at the end of a title. It doesn't work. Just have Animals in the Forest, great strong title, and then subtitle big underneath it. Um, and keep it simple as that. 
Um, but again, I think it needs a rethink about how you're going to do this one because it's not working for me as a kind of dr dramatic, inciting story. It could look a lot better with a rethink, I think. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope it's been helpful. Um, I hope you're not taking things too personally because all I wanted to do is to signpost you in the correct direction. Um, my website is up on my Reedsy, Reedsy page. Check out the designers out. There's some lots of very good designers out there. Um, and get excited about your covers. Do have a relationship, working relationship with the designer you work with. They love to talk most of them. They're really happy to discuss things, but do trust their judgments as well because that's what they've spent years uh, in experience doing. So you need to help them to help you because they will have you know, perceptions and ideas and perspectives that are things you would never even dreamed of probably. And you'll hopefully be happily surprised at the sort of things that they can produce for you. One of the things I do, if I can find my pen, is hand lettering. So I'm going to do very quickly, do a little bit of hand lettering for you here live on the screen. I'm going to, I'm going to go down to my pad here, if you can see this. I'm going to try and do this. It'll be upside down to you, but I'm going to show at the end. I'm going to say to you, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Oops, and my pen is running out of ink, which is great. Hang on, whoops. Here we go, good. And bye, here we go. Very scratchy lettering, because my pen is running out, my brush is running out of ink. There we go, whoops. Here we go, folks, goodbye. And thanks for having me and joining me on this show tonight, <laughs> the show, the presentation. Thank you all. Thanks everybody to Reedsy as well and to all the fantastic work they do in supporting authors and designers and bring them together. So God bless you all and I uh, hope we have another one soon. Bye to bye.